I see the film here as, um, you know, here's a mother caught between a man looking for redemption and the bad guys. And it all happened in one night. Am I pretty accurate? That's 100% <laughs> correct. Good. Describe Vanquish to our viewers. Tell us more about it. Um, it, it, it it's it, it's a, definitely a, a movie that's about a battle of wills between two people. You know, a, a man uh, who has uh, clearly uh, gotten to the end of his life and uh, has been a really bad guy, even though he's been seen as a hero. You know, he, he's been a very bad guy. He's done a lot of very corrupt things. And without giving away the ending, uh, he... Uh, his caretaker, Ruby uh, Rose, who, who's terrific in the movie, is is uh, has a very dark, shady past herself, and she's been she's become his caretaker. He, he's bound to a wheelchair in the movie. Morgan is, and she takes care of him. But then, as through a series of events, uh, Morgan needs her for one night to pick up a whole bunch of money from all these corrupt individuals all over the city, and she doesn't want to do it. And he has her daughter kidnapped and says, you don't have any choice. And much of what you then see throughout the movie is not exactly what you think it is. There's something really else going on. And it's a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun. It was, uh, uh, you know, Morgan's an old friend. This is my third movie with him. So it was, it's just like when I see him, it's like hanging out with my buddy. Yeah. And, you know, he's Morgan Freeman, obviously. And, uh, and so it's, it's, you know, it's just, it's a lot of fun working with him. So, so, Mr. George, you have a fantastic resume, right? You wrote Midnight Run, which yes. is fantastic. I love that movie. And Thank created you. the DNA of bad boys, among others. What got you interested in co-writing and directing Vanquish? You know, I always loved, it's funny because I, I do a lot. I've written a lot of action movies. I haven't really directed many action movies. Uh, and uh, a lot of the stuff I did, I... Uh, Sort of, sort of leans more towards comedy. Like I, I did a movie that's coming out in, in June called The Comeback Trail uh, with Robert De Niro, Tommy Lee Jones, and Morgan Freeman again. And that, that's just a comedy. That's just ridiculous, that movie. But I always loved Korean gangster movies. I just love them. They're so entertaining. They're so much fun. And, and, uh, and this was my chance to do one. That's kind of how I saw this. You know, it's like a, just a real fun nail biting, uh, mo crazy movie in a slightly alternate universe, you know? Uh, so I, so when the opportunity presented itself, I just said, yeah, of course I want to do that. The only bad thing is if a movie takes place in one night, which this movie does, you have to shoot nights, which I hate. So, you know, you're up night after night, after night, after night. And then at one, some point you go, why did, why did I want to do this? Why couldn't it be in the daytime? Because night looks cool, but man, it's, it's grueling. Yeah. Well, speaking of like colors and everything, I mean, you're also a successful painter and artist. And I see lots of greens here, neons, blue, yes. saturated colors in the film. How yes. did you come up with those artistic decisions? Thank you for noticing. Yeah, we, we uh, because I kept thinking, like I say, it is, the whole movie's at night. So, you know, you make the color palette, you know, not the sun. So, uh, yeah, so we found a very specific color palette for each character. You know, like Morgan's house was very blue and very purple and cold greens. He, he lives by the ocean. He lives all by himself. He's an isolated figure, you know, looking out at the sea. So, yeah, visually, that was his thing. Ruby's a bad guy in the movie, but she's wearing white. You know, we did a lot of opposites, you know, and then we found a color palette for each. She goes five places throughout the movie and each one we tried to come up with a very specific different color palette so that all the places didn't look the same. And you know what I also noticed your use of slow dissolves during a scene. I mean, normally dissolves are meant to signify the passing of time, but the time here is almost measured in milliseconds. It's quick. And when you use dissolves, it's quite ironic. Talk to yes. us about that. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. It was just something that happened. You know, we, we were we were looking at the, you know, I'd love to say, oh, I had this, you know, vision. But the truth of it is we were looking at it and then the editor tried a couple of dissolves and I said, man, that looks really cool. I, you know, well, let's just keep trying it. Yeah. And then we would just do it and do it and do it. And they were like, you know what, leave it. You know, I know it's weird, but it just looks so cool. 
So and let's talk about Ruby Rose and her character sure. as Vicky, who sneers at being called a girl. I love that. She has a backstory that you slowly peel away, like what you said. Talk to us about the character Vicky and working with Ruby Rose. Well, Ruby, you know, Ruby and I have the same birthday, which, uh, which obviously, but I'm many years older than she is, but we're, we're both born on March 20th. Uh, what was it like working with her? I, we were, again, you know, like I always say this, like, you know, you always hear this nonsense, like when people say, oh, well, the, the crew, it was a wonderful experience and yeah, everybody was fighting all the time. You know, that was not the case here. Everybody got along great. Ruby became like my best buddy. She became best friends with my wife. My wife and her actually have a scene together. My wife plays the, the evil governor at the end of the movie. Okay. And they became best friends. And working with her, she's very, very, she's a very fun, but very, very serious, committed actor. And she wants to know everything that's going on and this and that and this. And a lot of her performance is interesting. It's almost like a kind of a Steve McQueen performance in that she doesn't say all that much. It's a lot of it's in her eyes. A lot of it's in her, the way she's holding her body. And she's clearly very tense throughout the movie. And, uh, you know, I, I think I, ho I hope that answers your question. I, I, I it was it's a great experience, and it, it, whenever you're working with actors like that, it, it's always a lot of give and take. You try this, you know, uh, a lot of improvisation. You know, um, for a guy that's a writer, you know, I, I love to improv. I love. I want to always make it real. So. Um, what and, and you know what? I love the scenes between her and Morgan Freeman, but the heart of the film for me is Vicky's daughter, Juju yes. Journey Brenner. She's yes. so cute. <laughs> yes, she is. She's actually, uh, she's the daughter of, of, of very dear friends of ours. So um, I, I love putting friends in movies. I always do. You know, I put my wife in movies. I put all my buddies in movies. You know, I call people up. Hey, I'm making a movie. You want to be in it? You know, so, you know, uh, yeah, I love working with people I know because, they trust, you know, I trust them. They trust me. And, you know, I could get good things out of them, you know. It's a film made with love, obviously. But thank now, you. You're welcome. Now, this was shot in Mississippi during yes. the pandemic, right? Yes, yes. Was shooting during the pandemic one of the film's biggest challenges? Yes, because we had to get a COVID test every morning. And then somebody tested, had a false positive testing. So we had to shut down for a few days. Then everybody came. We dodged two hurricanes making this movie, too. We had to evacuate twice. So, you know, like we would shoot two, three days, shut down, shoot two, three days, shut down, evacuate, come back, shoot another few days. Yeah. So it was like, it, it was like getting beat up making this movie. You know, plus it was, all, like I said, it was all nights. Yeah. You know, yeah. which is, is just horrible. Before my final question, though, Mr. George, I want yes. to ask the music, but you're also a mus musician. So that explains the, the pulse pounding soundtrack. Talk to yeah. us about the music. The guy that wrote the music is a terrific composer. Uh, he, he's done a few movies, Aldo Schlock, who just a great guy. And I told him I didn't want to hear the music. I wanted to feel it. You know, so like, it's not like, a, it's not what I would call a super thematic score. It's more like just almost like sounds and vibes. And it almost like you say it is pulse, but a lot of it's a heartbeat kind of thump, 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 right. thump, 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 you know. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, when you get to the end of the movie, it's almost like, yeah, I mean, it was like wall-to-wall -wall score, but it was more like you felt it more than you, you, you heard it. It was, it was like almost part of the sound design. Um, so, yeah, hope, just hope that answers it. Vanquish arrives in theaters on April 16th. What do you hope for viewers to get after watching the film? I just hope they have a good time. You know, I mean, we had so much fun making it. And like, you know, these genre movies, they've been done to death. You know, like the, 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 the mom gets the daughter kidnapped and that, 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 that. So we tried to make this very, very different inside the confines of a genre movie. We tried to make it look different, feel different, sound different. And I just hope people have a good time and forget their troubles for 90 minutes. There you go. Congrats on Vanquish again, Mr. George. Thank you. It's like a video game with a bunch of nail-biting levels. <laughs> hey, I like that. I'll take that. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Thank Bye you. You're welcome. Bye for now and congrats on everything, okay? You got it, my friend. Thanks, buddy.